up to 24 different channels of audio. And we can play a CD, we can um, have different microphones plugged into this, and we also use um, the audio from the different tape decks so that you can hear during your show. And we also um, can have uh, sound from the mixer to let us know that it's working. This here is called tone. So that's the sound that you usually hear sometimes when there's no programs on, uh, on a certain channel. This is the sound that you normally hear. It's called tone. This here is the CD player and we can actually pop in a CD and play a track and use that track for say an opening uh, selection for our program or we can use it for uh, either background music for credits. Graphics machine, this machine allows us to put titles to our programs. So, for instance, um, we watch the news and you see the name of the fire chief going across his chest. Well, we can create that same type of graphic using this um, machine called a Compix character generator machine. And um, you can change the, the different colors of the fonts, you can change the typefaces, you can do a whole lot of things with this. Um, and it's basically just a computer. Type in uh, something that you want to use, and then you can use it over your video. And that way you can have graphics over the video during your presentation. area of, of importance in our operation is this room here. This is the studio. It's a 1,000 square foot studio and it's large enough to, to put together three sets at one time. And we have professional broadcast quality lights that we use. We have three robotic cameras. Uh, we can also use different backdrops. We have a uh, black backdrop here and then we also have a blue backdrop and um, there's a reason why we have a blue backdrop and if you can guess what that reason is I will be more than happy to let you know if you're right or wrong but um, we also have uh, enough space for you to put different sets together at one time so that you can have a whole production Then we also have uh, mic cables, microphones that we can hook up to use during the show. And over here is studio monitor. On the studio monitor, this allows the producer or the host to see what's being recorded while they are here in the studio making their show. So this is a very helpful thing to have in the studio. Then we also have a window right here between the studio and the control room so that folks in the studio can see folks in the control room. And if uh, people in the control room needs to contact or communicate with someone out in the studio, all they need to do is just come up to the window and get uh, that person's attention. So it's very important for us to have a window here in the studio. And that's pretty much uh, are the three important operational areas here at Charlottesville Public Access Television. Thanks. Area of, of importance in our operation is this room here. This is the studio. It's a 1,000 square foot studio and it's large enough to, to put together three sets at one time. And we have professional broadcast quality lights that we use. We have three robotic cameras. Uh, we can also use different backdrops. We have a uh, black backdrop here. And then we also have a blue backdrop. And um, 
There's a reason why we have a blue backdrop. And if you can guess what that reason is, I will be more than happy to let you know if you're right or wrong. But um, we also have uh, enough space for you to put different sets together at one time so that you can have a whole production Then we also have uh, mic cables, microphones that we can hook up to use during the show. And over here is studio monitor. On the studio monitor, this allows the producer or the host to see what's being recorded while they are here in the studio making their show. So this is a very helpful thing to have in the studio. Then we also have a window right here between the studio and the control room so that folks in the studio can see folks in the control room and if uh, people in the control room needs to contact or communicate with someone out in the studio all they need to do is just come up to the window and get uh, that person's attention so it's very important for us to have a window here in the studio and that's pretty much uh, are the three important operational areas here at Charlottesville Public Access Television Hey, it's Ace of Honey TV. This is your girl, Honey Azul Williams, and I'm here in Charlottesville, Virginia with Calvin Tate, the general manager of CPA TV. How you doing, Mr. Tate? Good. That's good. So tell us what exactly are the duties of a general manager? Well, here at Charlottesville Public Access TV, the duties are quite complex. Um, I usually just call myself a traffic cop. You know, oh. I just basically, when people want to use the studio and want to do some productions here at CPA TV, I just make sure that the schedule is available for them. They take care of all the appropriate paperwork and fees, and then uh, make sure that the equipment is working for them when they come in and do it. I like that emphasis on fees. You got to make sure you pay that money before you get up in the studio. <laughs> That's right. So some of the classes that you have taught, I actually attended one of your classes. Mm -hmm. So. So well, classes are class. important because we want to provide this facility community in general. And in order for you to get your hands on the equipment, you have to take a class to, to become certified. And the classes range from uh, operating uh, cameras, operating the uh, control room, and also being able to uh, know what the rules and the regulations are when you're using our facility. Charlottesville Public Access TV um, was formed back in 1993 and um, during that time they were looking for producers, people to help put shows on the air because it was you know, young, there wasn't a lot going on here. Um, the schedule, I think there was maybe three or four programs on a week. Wow. So uh, <laughs> a lot of billboards and I got involved by doing a, um, a monthly program called the Piedmont Virginia Fiddle and Banjo Association monthly meeting and I had to take a camera out to uh, a local church and record uh, uh, bluegrass music. Is that, that still comes on? And that still comes yeah, on. Yeah, because I've seen it and I was like, oh, bluegrass, I love all types of music. And that was, as a matter of fact, that's our longest running show oh, um, wow. on CKTV. So I, I just helped start that off. And so I, I was involved in um, public access to, to that degree. And, um, and, the, and the station went through some changes. Um, we used to have what was called um, uh, coordinators, um, facility coordinators. And these people were part-timers that would um, do all the programming, collect the videos, um, and make sure that they get on the air. And uh, that was pretty much the way things went for uh, almost 10 years. Um, and then uh, the city council wanted to grow the station even more, you know, get people more involved in, in doing more things. So uh, they decided to get a full-time facilities manager to help make that happen. And um, I was then approached uh, by one of the city councilors um, if I was interested in being that full-time person to help expand the, uh, the, the level of uh, what public access TV was doing. Uh, because at that time, we had moved. 
who used to be down on Main Street next to uh, the Greyhound Terminal. Oh, There's a Comcast or a Delphia Cable uh, facility right in the corner. Cable, a cable. Yeah. Yeah. 